We've all seen this a million times by now. Even if you're not a NASCAR fan, you saw this on your feed whether you wanted to or not. It was all over TikTok, YouTube, TV news, you name it. This was NASCAR's first truly viral moment in what seems like ages. After a long, painful slog from TV ratings darling to complete irrelevancy that dragged on for nearly 20 years, NASCAR was finally back in the nation's center of attention. And for good reason. Just looking at this now, a year removed from the moment, it still doesn't seem real. To the people there in Martinsville when it happened, it didn't seem real either. Look at them. They're just standing around looking at each other as though they all just had some sort of mass collective hallucination. It was like a glitch in the matrix that we all witnessed firsthand. Ross Chastain's wall ride to punch his ticket into competing for the NASCAR championship race was a once in a lifetime physics defying event that we will all be talking about for decades to come. And all that being said, it pretty much had no lasting impact on NASCAR or any of the drivers or anything else whatsoever. It was a video game move off into turn three. Take a look at what he did. I have never seen anything you like that before in my you life. That was straight video game. First, let's give some context behind the viral moment itself. The man behind it all, Ross Chastain, is a watermelon farmer from Florida who used the money his family's business made to get some backmarker rides early in his career. He could keep all four wheels on the ground and bring the cars home in one piece. And that was good enough to land a part-time ride with Brad Keselowski Racing's truck team in 2013. And can we just appreciate for a moment the level of talent that came through that program? Like, jeez and lord mercy. Brad has an eye for talent. Maybe that's why his new team RFK has been on fire lately. It wasn't an accident. But anyway, during his 2013 campaign, Ross Chastain won two polls, finished in the top five four times, and got seven top tens in just 14 races. He had an average finish of 10 flat, and had he sustained that pace for the rest of the season, he would have had the second best average finish on the year. Even back then, he was putting up championship level numbers. He would use that to springboard into an Xfinity Series ride with Chip Ganassi, an established top tier team, and win for them at Las Vegas. Even when DC Solar, their sponsor, backed out because they got raided by the FBI for being complete frauds, Ross Chastain still bounced back. He kept winning in the Truck Series, landed a ride with Ganassi in the top division, and when that team merged with Trackhouse Racing in 2022, he kept his ride in the renumbered One Car. He then went on to win his first and second races in the top division that year and set himself up for a showing in the playoffs where the top 16 drivers will duke it out across the remaining 10 races. His teammate Daniel Suarez also nabbed a win, and with all the momentum in the world, the NASCAR nation is expecting a deep playoff run from the Melon Man. And he delivers, albeit by the skin of his teeth. The first round of the playoffs see him escape with an average finish of 11th, and the second round is even closer with an average finish of 18th. Only a fourth place at Talladega and his existing points cushion have saved him, but that means he'll be below the cutoff line for the third round. He has to do something to make it into the top four, and across the next three races, he does just that, with two runner-up finishes and that fateful fourth-place finish at Martinsville. On the last lap of a brutal 500-lap war of attrition race at Martinsville, NASCAR's oldest and smallest track, Ross Chastain is just two points short of making the top four for the final race of the season and competing for the championship. He needs to pass two lead lap cars in front of him to make it a tie for fourth in the standings, and he'll win the tiebreaker by virtue of having more wins on the season. He's in 10th at the moment, so there's nine such candidates to pass, but he's half a straightaway back from the nearest one, now with just half a lap to go. So what does he do? He just throws it into fifth gear and slams the gas in a part of the track where you're supposed to brake hard for one of the tightest turn radiuses in motorsports. I mean, here he is just a few laps earlier, slamming on his brakes so hard that his rotors glow cherry red as he completes a pass on Chase Elliott. But this time, he throws caution to the wind and says, Jesus, take the wheel. And he didn't just get those two spots, he got six. He went from 10th to 4th. And the man he beat at the line by a nose is Denny Hamlin, the exact same guy who was sitting at 4th in the standings just half a lap to go, and the guy he had to beat to make the top four into the playoffs. Making it especially even more gut-wrenching for Hamlin is that he and Ross have had beef for most of the season. There was a real rivalry there, with the two of them trading barbs with one another and actually coming to blows out on the track. For Hamlin, who had been widely mocked by NASCAR fans as a choke artist who could never win the crown, this was just a slap in the face. Your rival, who you are undeniably better than, has just pulled off a move that should only work in video games and beat you by a nose and kicked you out of the opportunity to finally hoist the cup at season's end and prove all the haters wrong. That's all gone now. As of recording this, Denny Hamlin has the most wins in NASCAR history without a title to show for it at 51. 
He has won every crown jewel there is, including the Daytona 500 thrice, but has never gotten the cup. It is just yet another gut punch in a long line of gut punches, but that's a story for another time. But how was this even possible? How did Ross Chastain do that, and why has nobody tried that before? Well, people have tried it before, a few times in fact. In 2008 at Kansas, Carl Edwards was in a dogfight for the cup with Jimmy Johnson. And knowing that it could come down to every last point mattering, Carl drove into turn three and never lifted. He said in post-race interviews that it worked in video games and he thought, sure, why not, just to see if it would work in real life. Well, it didn't. In 2021 at the Southern 500, Kyle Larson rode the wall and slammed to the back of, of all people, Denny Hamlin. But Hamlin kept his foot in the gas and did some wall riding of his own and came out of turn four with the W. Sitting in third for that race with the best seat in the house was Ross Chastain. Perhaps it was Larson that planted the idea in his head in the first place. But Ross said in his post-race interview that, like Carl Edwards, it was a video game that had inspired the move. He played NASCAR 2005 for the GameCube when he was a teenager and he used to wall ride all the time. He even said he had pre-planned to do the wall ride if he was in a position where it was the only option left on the table and he just didn't tell anybody about it. So why did this work in 2022 when it hadn't previously? Well, previous cars like the Car of Tomorrow in 2008 and the Gen 6 car in 2021 were of softer construction. They were designed to have large crush zones to protect the driver and dissipate energy in the event of a wreck, and they worked. During the lifetime of the COT and the Gen 6 cars, there was not a single fatality or a serious career-ending injury. But the Gen 7 car of 2022 was more rigidly constructed. This was to cut costs to make the cars more durable and to make them faster as the chassis and the body wouldn't flex and sway as much in the corners. However, a few injuries in its debut season have left a lot of doubt surrounding its safety credentials. Earlier that season, Kurt Busch suffered a career-ending concussion at Pocono, and Alex Bowman had to sit out several weeks after a concussion at Texas. In both incidents, the contact they made with the walls seemed minor in comparison to some Gen 6 and COT crashes, but they still sent two drivers to the hospital. But the rigid construction of these next-gen cars means that Ross can do a wall ride without the car crushing and digging into the wall. Therefore, he can make up an insane amount of time. Unofficially, his wall ride that day was the fastest lap ever clocked at Martinsville. And Ross did this knowing full well that minor crashes had injured his fellow drivers just months before. He knew he could be the next guy sent to the hospital driving a next-gen cup car, but he just didn't care. He found a way to take the faults of the new car and use them to his advantage. During the move, he sustained 5 Gs for a few seconds, which is more than what an astronaut experiences during the entirety of takeoff. The Watermelon Farmer's Hail Mary maneuver would go on to be affectionately called the Hail Melon. The aftermath of this move was felt all throughout the internet, TV, and radio. It was all anyone was talking about. At work the next day, people I knew who didn't keep up with NASCAR were talking my ear off about it. Ross Chastain was the talk of the nation. He was on the Monday morning shows and all over TikTok. Ross Chastain not only punched his ticket to the final round of the playoffs, but was now the hottest name in NASCAR. And this couldn't have come at a better time. The Hail Melon took place during the penultimate race of the season, and now everyone and their grandmother is talking about Ross, NASCAR, and the playoffs. The last few races of the season have been tanking in ratings for 15 years, and now they finally have the shot in the arm they need. This was the catalyst the playoffs needed to send NASCAR back into the spotlight of relevancy. But the ratings from the championship race came in, and they were down from the previous year. It wasn't a sharp decline, but even still, that didn't make any sense. After all that, all the buzz and media attention, and it didn't translate at all to the final race of the season. No one outside of NASCAR's core fan base bothered to tune in. NASCAR's most viral moment had not delivered in the slightest. But why? Well, I would argue because it was viral. It's just indicative of where we're at as a society. Things are consumed, replayed, spread, consumed again and again ad nauseum, and then immediately forgotten about. We have 24-hour drip feeds of content out there, and nothing lasts for more than a week or two at most. Hell, things that happened a month or two ago are considered ancient internet history. Things move too fast nowadays, and Ross Chastain's Hail Melon was tailor-made for TikTok. It takes less than a minute to watch, it's fun and cool as hell even without context, and it is immediately forgotten just as another TikTok trend about a week later. The lifespan of the Hail Melon was not enough to carry people into next week's finale race. Its 15 seconds of fame were up and it left no real lasting legacy. It's fun to show in promo material, but it ultimately didn't matter much then in November of 2022, and it doesn't matter much today. It's kind of like an old viral Vine video that's fun to go back and watch and rewatch from time to time, but it has no lasting legacy outside of that. It was a flash in the pan, but not much more. But what about that wall ride? Surely that'll become the new meta. We're gonna see this again, right? Uh, well, no. 
In early 2023, NASCAR outlawed the Hail Melon and moves like it. If you full throttle wall road to advance your position in the future, NASCAR would hit you with a still to be determined penalty. No one has tried it since. Curiously though, NASCAR waited until the last race of the season was over to outlaw the move. I think they were hoping lightning would strike twice and they would get another Hell Melon, this time with championship implications. And they almost got it. Ross Chastain finished third in that last race of the season. And according to the NASCAR playoff format, whoever's the highest finisher of the final four is the champ. And he only had one contender in front of him. Phoenix, the host of the finale, is about twice as big as Martinsville, and it is conceivable that a second Hell Melon could have worked. But Ross was just too far back to even attempt such a thing. But the Hell Melon did at least prove that the NASCAR playoffs were here to stay. Introduced in 2014 to much derision, the playoff format has had some minor tweaks made to it, but has the same knockout style format as it did nearly 10 years ago. Because of that, Ross Chastain created the Hail Melon maneuver in the first place. If he wasn't faced with immediate elimination in that moment, he would never have even entertained the idea of going full throttle into the wall. However, with the added pressure of the playoffs knockout format, he had no choice but to send his car careening into the wall at full speed just for the slimmest hope of advancing to the next and final round. This cements the playoffs as a mainstay of NASCAR for the foreseeable future, right? Well, not really. Remember, this did not translate into ratings or any long-term engagement, so what's the point? Sure, the playoffs made this happen, but what of it? If it doesn't put butts in seats or eyes on the TV, who cares? This did nothing more to legitimize the playoffs than anything else. If anything, it showed what cartoonish depths NASCAR drivers would subject themselves to in order to earn even a chance at claiming the cup. But there was at least one thing the Hail Melon proved. Without a shadow of a doubt, this whole series of events proved that at least NASCAR isn't rigged. NASCAR has long been viewed by the rest of the motorsports world as the WWE of racing. People have been saying that NASCAR rigs the end results of races for two decades, oftentimes held up by no flimsier evidence than, well, wasn't it convenient that this happened? But convenient things happen all the time. Storybook endings do occasionally happen. And in the final race of the 2022 season, NASCAR had every incentive in the world to rig their finale race, and they didn't take it. And I can prove it. Going into the final race at Phoenix, the final four championship eligible drivers consisted of Chase Elliott, Ross Chastain, Christopher Bell, and Joey Logano. Chase Elliott was NASCAR's golden boy, the most popular driver in the sport for years. He's the one driver that pretty much everybody likes, and even his few haters don't hate him that much. Hell, I've heckled him at races before, and even I still buy his merch from time to time, mostly because his marketing is second to none. Then you have Ross Chastain, the hottest, most viral name in NASCAR. The one man in the sport that everyone in America knows, hot off the heels of arguably the most viral and recognizable move in NASCAR history. If NASCAR is ever going to tip the scales in favor of anyone, it's going to be him. Next is Christopher Bell, a young hotshot that has quickly gained a reputation for winning when it matters most. That season, he'd been mediocre at best all year, but when faced with elimination, he won a clutch race to put himself into the playoffs. When faced with elimination for the round of eight, he found a miracle win at Charlotte. And when faced yet again with Bing Nix for the final four, he won that race at Martinsville, the same race where Ross Chastain pulled off the Hell Melon. Forget the most viral man in NASCAR for a minute, Bell has pulled off the greatest series of clutch wins NASCAR has ever seen. When he needed to win to keep his season alive, he somehow always found a way to wrestle victory away from the jaws of defeat. He is the one man who has proven this year that when he needs a win, he will find it. And then finally, there is Joey Logano, the one man that nobody likes and everyone hates. When the chips are down, he will resort to embarrassingly filthy tactics to walk away with a checkered flag. He has absolutely no qualms about booting people out of the way or just wrecking them to get ahead. The hatred he garners among the NASCAR nation is well earned. And you want to know who won that championship race and walked away with the cup in 2022? Joey frickin' Logano. The worst possible outcome for NASCAR. They could have tipped the scales for any of the other three drivers and I doubt anyone would have cared. If Ross had won, they would have said it was rigged probably, but Chase and Bell had some probable deniability. Instead, NASCAR let this one play out with no interference and Joey Logano walked away with his second NASCAR Cup Series championship. It sucks, but at least we know it wasn't a setup. Except the man who finished second to Joey Logano was Ryan Blaney, his teammate, who had been eliminated from the playoffs entirely before they even started due to tons of unique winners and a gimmicked win in your end system. Ryan Blaney ran Joey down and then backed off and let Joey cruise to victory, not even trying to challenge Joey for the top spot. If he had passed Joey, then Logano would have still been the champion, as he was the highest finisher of the Final Four, 
However, it has been widely speculated that NASCAR tells all non-championship eligible drivers to lay over for the Final Four. Don't wreck them, don't race them too hard, and don't pass them if you can help it. Of the nine top division championship finale races held under the current playoff format, all nine have been won by the eventual champion. The lower divisions have had the same format for just as long, and in nine seasons the Truck Series champion won the final race three out of nine times, and the Xfinity Series champion won the last race six of nine times. Yet somehow the Cup Series is a perfect nine for nine with the champion always winning the last race. It's perfect for optics having your champion of the highest division take the last checkered flag of the year, but at this point it's starting to smell just a little bit fishy. Blaney likely got up to second and was reminded to stand down and let Joey have it. I mean, just look at him in his post-race interview. He's livid. He's pissed because he, a race car driver, was told not to race. This was especially gut-wrenching for him because this was his first winless season since 2016. He did win the All-Star Race for 2022, which is a nice consolation prize, but it's not a points-paying event. It's kind of like winning the Home Run Derby in the MLB, but then never scoring a single home run in the regular season and then missing the playoffs making Blaney just the third driver ever to win the All-Star Race and not post one points-paying win in the same season. Oh hey, I was at all three of these races. Lucky me, I guess. But anyway, winning the All-Star Race is a nice distraction. The million-dollar paycheck definitely helps dull the pain. But then you have to sit there and marinate in the thought that you couldn't get it done when it mattered. And for Blaney, he couldn't seal the deal because he might have been told not to. So the final race of the season might have been rigged after all. So what was the takeaway from all of this? What was the moral of the story from the tale of the Hell Melon? What changed? What were the long-term implications from this one legendary moment? Hell, forget all that. What did we even learn from all of this? I don't fucking know, man. It was a video game move off into turn three. Take a look at what he did. I have never seen anything you like that before in my you life. Made Holy you see that? That was straight video game.